Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Lindra. We begin today's episode on a somber note. We've been asked to go to the graveyard to honor the death of, or the passing of Sierra's daughter, Sybil, the prophetic girl back from the village. So let's go do that. For some strange reason, the game decides to give you this little cutscene that sort of describes the scenario in which Sybil was discovered. Here we go. Although the game originally claimed that Sybil was killed in her sleep, this cutscene actually makes it appear that she was found outside her own house. Uh, that's actually the mayor's house. Yeah, the game doesn't really pull any punches here. You can clearly see Chancellor Ronan leaving the scene, which goes hand in hand with the fact that we know that he's basically the head of a cult of devil worshippers that's sort of subverted the village as a whole. Yeah, notice Ludus said something about, uh, honoring the dead, but he'll say the same dialogue here. Oh, Mead, I'm sorry, not Lewis. Mead has the exact same dialogue, but it doesn't actually get out of the way until you attempt to leave the cemetery area. To be honest, the game does that a lot. It sort of forces you to leave an area before it allows you to progress to the next part of the cutscene, but in this case, it really makes you look like a jerk, because you're trying to leave, you know, a funeral you were asked to attend. Septimus, of course, is completely businesslike. He's got, a uh, a new objective for us. We're apparently going to be entering Maya's dream next while she sleeps. Yeah, this is pretty similar to most of our objectives at Alundra, where we sort of wandered into girls' bedrooms while they were sleeping and hijacked their dreams without any permission, and nobody really called us on it. I guess this game's gonna pick up, or I should say, Dual Hearts picks up where this game left off. You notice Eustace still alive. That was actually kind of an interesting aspect of this whole scenario. You'll notice there were two basically, there were basically two villagers who served the same function. Sybil had prophetic dreams, but Eustel was the fortune teller. Usually, if two characters serve the, serve the same function in the story, one of them is old and decrepit and the other one is young, usually the old one passes away and the young one takes their place. It's a significant curveball that Sybil's, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, Sybil is the one who actually dies in this scenario. Now, there's a little bit of extra exploration we can do now, now that we have the power glove, but we'll hold that off for a little while because shortly after this next level, we're going to get effectively the last item we need to get full mobility through all rate. To, through all areas of the world map that aren't that aren't explicitly locked off to us for storyline purposes. So once we hit that point, we'll be able to pick up a whole ton of stuff and enter a couple of optional dungeons. So we'll do the exploration then. So yeah, remember Maya, Myra is high on the list of people who don't trust us, and she basically admits at this point that she's treating Maya like her surrogate daughter now that Nadi has been killed, or has been killed for quite some time. So we need Septimus to run some interference for us. And he uses kind of a lame excuse. He wants a private place to speak with Myra, but of course, apparently Myra's own home is not private enough, including considering the fact that Maya's asleep anyway. So yeah, they basically just go, yeah. See, Myra actually explicitly calls him on it, but she goes along anyway, because, you know, people are idiots. And of course, they just go into the bushes next to her house, which looks really funny, all things considered. So let's go be a creep. Into Maya's bedroom, uninvited, of course, this is a video game, so everybody sleeps fully clothed anyway, it's not like we're doing anything weird. Nice dialogue there. So here we are. This is Child Maya. This is yet another breather dungeon similar to the, the Sanctuary, which I guess, uh, again, goes along with the fact that we're really supposed to be focusing on the storyline as it increases in gravity over the course of, you know, about the midway point in the game. We're basically going to be playing tag with the personification of Maya's childhood innocence, so to speak. We've got this larger courtyard, courtyard area where we're going to have to track her down a bunch of times. And each time we do, a puzzle room will open uh, in the northern part of the area. So let's go first let's go down here to the southeastern portion where we'll find the typical save point and the area's only Gilded Valley. It's been a while since we picked one of those up. That's, I believe, number 21. Let's go pretend like we saved our game, because there's no point in showing that particular one. It's getting a little tedious to, to <coughs> cut every save room, and they don't really have any impact on the plot. So now we have to figure out how to get up to where Maya is. You'll notice up here, there are a bunch of doors with figures of Maya on them. These doors will open one by one as we continue to win the little game of tag. There's one particular route to the upper areas of Maya's dream, This, yeah, these moving platforms here, that we're going to see quite a bit of, because there are a bunch of platforms that can only be accessed specifically by following these 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 specific two moving platforms. And so the chest contains the area's only life vessel, so let's get that now and get that out of the way. Yeah, there are only two real treasures to pick up here, and we get them both at the very start. 
I'd say we're pretty close. Let's just uh, go behind these trees and around. Oops, no, we were supposed to make that jump, so let's uh, pretend like I did that correctly this, the second time around. Again, another another case of the perspective in this game, screwing up my ability to make jumps correctly. So yeah, catch her, she makes a little giggle, kind of creepy, after the, once you've heard it for the fifth or sixth time, and you can hear a rumbling sound that indicates that a door is open. So let's go find that door. They open in order from left to right, so it's pretty easy to figure out where you're supposed to be going once you find the doors. Here's the first one. This puzzle is pretty simple, all things considered. Each of these is a basically a single puzzle room where the goal is to get to the little statue of the little bound statue of Maya. Typically in the center or in the north part of the room. Strike it three times with any weapon, the chains come off, and Maya's freed. Effectively we're going to be finding out uh, a little bit about Maya's repressed, repressed memory, so to speak. Find a little bit about where she came from and why she is the way she is. So, that statue looks awfully familiar. Turns out our village wasn't the only one who was worshipping Melzus. Although, apparently, <laughs> this was a kingdom-wide thing, given that the king actually had, had to hand down an edict to have all those statues destroyed. So yes, for some reason, Ma Maya's father was killed, and her mother was a devil worshipper. Um, so, we can begin to understand why she's so screwed up as it is. It certainly doesn't point to her being a villain or anything. I think we can still put her firmly in the camp of heroes. So you can see my uh, second hiding spot down to the lower left. <clears throat> Once again, we have to follow these floating platforms around to where we picked up the light vessel, and then head to the north to pick up or to pick up Maya the second time. So we go across here. You can use the light vessel chest to jump up here, and there she is the second time around. It's honestly a little arbitrary. Most of the time you'll be able to see Maya just from wandering around the area, since it isn't very large. But the amount of effort you have to actually go through to get to Maya, and occasionally even the puzzle, puzzle doors, varies pretty widely from instance to instance. This puzzle should be really familiar. We've done a lot like this, jumping across a bunch of floating platforms. Hit the switch, then the back, and around we go. Again, pretty easy. It only took me basically one try once I understood what was going on to do that one. This seems a little bit more complicated. This is Maya's mother again. She doesn't really have dialogue. I believe only Maya speaks in these scenes, for the most part. But the, the gist here is that Maya's father was killed in an accident, and Maya's mother became obsessed with worshipping the gods, or really just the specific god that everybody in this region seemed to worship up until about five years ago, which is to say, Melzus. Not much to say here, really, just that she's being incredibly thorough, although she can't possibly be reading that much considering how quickly she moved from bookshelf to bookshelf. What do you have to say about this, Maya? So yes, interestingly enough, Maya's mother still does worship Melzus, but she does seem to need to know exactly why uh, her husband was killed. Or if indeed... I guess the implication is supposed to be that there was something suspicious about the manner of his death that led them to believe that it wasn't an accident. Possibly he was killed uh, for the same reason, or for similar reasons that Alundra's in trouble, for, for knowing too much about the real nature of the gods, so to speak. So, now we have to track down Maya for a third time, and again, she's very close to where she to very in a very similar area to where she was the second time, just a little bit further to the north. And we actually need to use these platforms to get to the third uh, puzzle door, but of course. I forgot this and just assumed that it would be just as easy to get there as it was to the first two. You actually have to go back <coughs> back around and jump up back on those platforms and across to the third door. So let's skip a bit and pretend that I actually remember to do that right the first time, which I did not. Make these jumps and we can now try to solve the third puzzle. This one's substantially trickier than the first two. We've got three thorn bushes we have to get out of the way, and three torches. Now, in order to actually make this throw, you have to be pushing left while you're touching the wall, which is a little unintuitive, and I actually got it wrong the first few times. The same is true for this uh, second one. You have to <laughs> be pushing up while holding, it, holding yourself against that wall right over there. Otherwise, you'll either throw it into the wall, and if you try to jump, you'll overshoot. It's really annoying. It's another one of those puzzles similar to the some of the four torch puzzles, puzzles in Magascar, where you have to <coughs> do all three sort of very tricky throws in one go, or else you have to start over completely, which is not ideal, but still, as long as you know what you're doing, it's not that difficult, I suppose. Anyway, third memory. 
wow, this went, things went from bad to worse. Her mother was burned at the stake for questioning the gods. I guess by comparison to what's going on in the village right now, uh, this is actually a bit more pleasant. I guess Mel's just mellowed a little bit in his old age in the last ten years. That was pretty freaking brutal. I honestly <laughs> have no idea if that scene was extended in the Japanese version or anything. It did seem a little short compared to the other two scenes that we've seen that we've seen so far. Uh, I did initially have some concern that maybe a little bit of the, the actual burning was edited out, but I don't believe that's actually the case. Anyway, moving to find Maya the fourth time, she's actually right down where we started. I got lost a little bit, as usual, as is kind of typical for a room like this. She's right here where we started. It figures the game would pull that on us at least once. Anyway, that was pretty easy. I guess it gives you a little time to process the scene that you've actually just seen. Uh, I'm certainly it generates a lot of sympathy toward Maya overall as a character. It tells you a lot about basically how she got his... It tells you a little bit about the fact that she's been facing Melzis more or less her entire life. And in fact, most likely Melzis has taken away both of her parents. So... <laughs> tells us a lot about the state of mind she was in when she came to Anoa Village in the first place, or whatever motivated her to come here. <coughs> Presumably for much the same reasons Lundra did. Anyway, the fourth door, again, is blocked off to us, so we have to head around in this direction, similar to what we need to do to get to the third door, then we can cross the fifth corridor and enter the fourth puzzle room. Here we basically have to jump from switch to switch. Each switch will lower or move a platform that we need to get to the next one. Hitting this one here in the corner will cause this platform to move, allowing us to access the third switch. Getting to the upper right corner, this is actually the most difficult jump in this area, because that platform doesn't just barely gets close enough for us to actually make that jump, allowing us to get to the upper left corner. Once you've done that, the rest of the puzzle is pretty easy. The only thing, for some reason, is an e the, the game gives you an extra barrel puzzle, as opposed to just giving you the last switch or letting you access the statue directly. You can throw it anywhere on that switch, it's pretty easy to, to jump up on it, and you can always pick it up and throw it again later. Just don't do what I did the stupidly the first time, and throw it on top of the same platform Maya's on. Alright, so you can kind of see Maya there in the corner, under the bed. We assume those are follow followers of Melzus who came to to find the daughter. I guess she escaped the burning at the stake. Yeah, they actually bothered to edit in a clip of Maya crying. So, she had to flee, flee her village in fear of Melzus, basically, and she's been this way for years, all the way through the original burning of the actual icons of Melzus on the Order of the King. It's kind of interesting, I suppose. Anyway, let's go find her for the fifth time now. We're getting pretty close to the to the to the deep deepest parts of her psyche now. Uh, oddly enough, this the, the long run of this is to get Maya to trust us. You would think that you know mind raping someone wouldn't actually instill trust, but you know video game logic is what it is. This is pretty easy. There's nothing particularly challenging in terms of platforming to the fifth door. So let's just go ahead and clear the fifth puzzle. At this point, it should also be pretty obvious that Maya is in fact an ally, and that her path to Anoa Village in general, and her dealings with Melzus, are much worse than anything we've had to put up with, which explains why she's a little bit more sort of downtrodden and pessimistic about her actual chances, because she knows what Melzus is really capable of. Certainly a lot more than we do. I mean, we're still taken by surprise by the fact that, for example, one of Melzus's followers actively killed a villager. She's seen someone burn at the stake, you know, a very close personal family member. So here we, here we cut out a bit. Presumably Maya used her Dreamwalker abilities to cure that guy. I think the implication is that he was sick somehow. And we'll get some dialogue explaining it. Yeah, so she's now discovered on her own that she has the same Dreamwalker powers that we do. I mean, she's clearly the same Elna race. She's got the elf ears and everything. And yeah, so while her mother apparently maintained a fervent belief in Melzus, Maya has seen him for what he truly is, a bringer of nightmares to the people of the Torla region in general. 
So, we've only got one piece of the story left, I suppose. Uh, something that bridges us with modern Maya, and we'll get that in the sixth puzzle room. First, we've got to find her again. Which we will, eventually. As usual, uh, get a little lost. It's a little bit of a pain that there are certain areas that you can only get to in this, in this dungeon through very, very specific platforming paths. But yeah, there she is. So let's, uh, get back on the little cliff, get back around, and meet Maya for the, the sixth time. This, I suppose, is the easiest puzzle to get there. It's right there. So let's go do that. Nothing particularly tricky here. We've got a couple of briar patches we have to burn down, and a torch right there. So, let's head around this area. Again, the only trouble here is a matter of perspective. Knowing how to make the jump, and the fact that you can actually swim around the back of this area to see where you're supposed to go and to get up on those stairs. Put this barrel here so we can get back the way we came. Positioning for throwing this torch is a little tricky. You should not be on the floating platforms. Ideally, the best place to do it is here on this staircase by, by moving up. And then you can simply jump to the sixth statue, and we'll finally see the last piece of Maya's backstory. I guess I had paused there by accident. So yeah, Inoa did not get Lars talking to her like we did, but she did see the same images of Melzus. Or at least he seemed to show himself to her, much the same way he did to us. So yes, the, her long tragic journey ended here, supposedly. And yes, I think we can finally confirm that she is, in fact, completely dedicated to the eradication of Melzus. So she is definitely on our side, so to speak, one of the few people that we can wholly count as not a worshipper of Melzus, along with, I guess, Septimus and Jess, and that's basically it, and you know, now Maya. So the last thing we need to do is head to the direct center of the area. There's basically only one more short puzzle we have to solve, and then we'll be directly brought back to the real world, with no immediate resolution in terms of our dealings with Maya as a whole. So yeah, we'll talk to her from the last door. We'll basically be playing uh, Red Light, Green Light. She'll say, and this dialogue cannot be scrolled forward at all. She'll say, and I quote, I spy a cutie guy. I can't even imagine what that was in the original Japanese. And while that dialogue is on screen, you can move. When she stops, you have to hide behind one of these pillars. The speed at which she says that varies somewhat widely, so obviously here it's pretty slow, so we have all the time in the world to make it to the next pillar. There we go. So yeah, still pretty slow, but for some reason when we get close to the end, she speeds up considerably, and it takes us uh, quite a while to get the last little... Yeah, see? She fakes us out a bunch of times. Optimally, what you want to do is move back a bit, and then you'll get a little extra time to head up there. So, we'll try that, and then we'll talk to Maya and leave her dream. And what's the consequence of doing this? We will find out. Now that we've left, on the next episode of Let's Play Lundra. See you then!